all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show so uh, the discussion today is about the monkeypox virus so there are many people who are talking about it you can read about them at many places too what i wanted to do was give us the latest update on the monkeypox and then talk about the structure how does this virus infect our cells what does it do within the cell how does it make more viruses and how does it cause the death of the cell the mechanism of the, of the virus itself i think that is also very interesting so let's start and uh, thank you very much here we have a new member and we also have uh, cynthia who is a new member uh, who is a member so cynthia your your badge shows that too although once again i thought that i had created new badges i do not know when they will become available but thank you very much for being members okay so let's start so this is drbean.com in the description there is a link to drbean.com if you wanted to get access to it here is monkeypox uh, you can read it from a uh, an immunology book as well this is just an easy and free access and here are various um, links i'm going to start with a detailed discussion of the current status and not let's start with the current status this is europe so from europe's point of view there are now as of 31st may 321 total cases in 17 states or countries most cases are in young men self identifying as men having sex with men there have been no deaths so that is important no deaths the clinical presentation is mostly mild and they are presenting with and this is why uh, it is curious this situation this was not observed like this before so the presenting with lesions on the genitalia and perigenital region so that is the region around the anal canal for example or around the penis and uh, those structures indicating that transmission likely occurred by close physical contact contact during sexual activities and i wanted to talk about this because somebody made a comment when i was speaking with dr heather today uh, that this is possibly a transmission through semen so it is not a transmission through semen instead this is a transmission through lesions so if somebody has a rash on their body and that is a monkey pox rash that means there is virus in there and any uh, fluids from that rash when they will come in contact with another part another person's skin and again that skin has to be broken just sitting on the skin is not sufficient so if the skin gets cracked which during the anal intercourse it can happen during many other skin uh, many other functions skin can become cracked uh, dry skin becomes microscopically cracked then injuries are common as well in in general in human beings so meaning the skin can be cracked so from those cracks the secretions or the fluids they can enter below the skin layers and infect the cells there that is how the transmission is being observed multiple countries have reported cases with which appear to be linked to events taking place in spain and belgium so i think there were some sex related events and then from there the spread is seen however so this is important many countries also report cases with no known epidemiological link to travel abroad so there is an endemic part as well and here is the list of countries uh, you can see the numbers then case definition this is also an interesting thing how is europe defining a case of monkey pox so a confirmed case is a person with the lab confirmed monkey pox infection and how is that lab confirmation pcr test that is one or ortho pox virus specific P- pcr assay positive result which is then confirmed by nucleotide sequences probable case is a person with an unexplained rash on their skin 
on any part of their body and one or more other symptoms of monkeypox, fever and um, other symptoms, then it may as well be and one of the following has a positive lab test result of orthopox virus infection, has an epidemiological link to a confirmed or probable case of monkeypox within the 20 days, 21 days, reported travel to monkeypox endemic countries within the 21 days, or in a person of any sexual orientation who had multiple or anonymous sexual partners in the 21 days before the symptoms, is a man who has sex with men. Or a person with an unexplained generalized or localized maculopapular or vesiculopapular rash with centrifugal spread. Centrifugal spread is away from the center. So starting from the head, for example, or the arms. So that is the EU. And John Snyder, I see him being a new member as well. So yeah, <laughs> we have one more new member. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so this is Europe, US. So in the US now, we have, I believe, 10 cases. And so here, these are the cases, California 4, Colorado 2. So these are more than 10. So as of June 2, 21 cases. And California, where I am, we have four cases over here. Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Massachusetts, where I used to be. Pennsylvania, Utah, Virginia, and Washington. So these are the cases there. Again, a standard summary, similar messages everywhere on all pages. A rash that looks like a monkeypox rash that is a slightly... First, there is no elevation, just skin redness. Then it starts becoming elevated and then it becomes filled with the fluids, but it is elevated. Then it becomes more vesicular. That means the, the roof of that elevated skin becomes thin like a bubble and then it uh, crust, uh, bursts and then crusts over. So rash that looks like a monkeypox or some looks like monkeypox or someone who was diagnosed with confirmed or probable monkeypox had skin to skin contact with someone in a social network experiencing monkeypox activity. This includes men who have sex with men who meet partners through an online website, digital application or social event. Uh, the, why the reason it's nothing to do with the, with the app itself that, Hey, you meet through Grindr and you have a problem. It is that they do not know that their partner may have had the rash. So if they are living together, they would know each other and they would know if there is any issue. But if they're meeting someone new and afterwards they develop a rash, then it may be that their new partner may have been infected. Barbara has become a member. Awesome. Thank you. And then uh, Johnny Baloney <laughs> has become a member. Thank you very much. So many members. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so then back here, traveled outside of the U.S. to country with confirmed cases of monkeypox, had contact with dead or live wild animal or exotic pet that exists only in Africa, or the products that are made from those pets. And in the endemic countries where the monkeypox is present, over there, if they are eating the animal meat, that may be infected can cause, and the meat is not properly cooked, then that can cause this infection as well. So that is US. Then this is WHO. And WHO's report, this one, I would like to go over this. It is a bit long. So before this report, I want to go over what is this virus. So, so there are so many people talking about what happens and um, so I wanted to go over, I wanted to mobinize this. The only request is to please forgive me. I did not do the uh, diagrams beforehand as I was uh, with Dr. Heather. All is his fault today. So as I was with Dr. Heather and then uh, just didn't have enough time. So I'm, gonna, uh, I'm going to present it to you by drawing and it might take a little more time. So here is what we have. Monkeypox virus is a pox infection virus. That means the infection it causes is like pox, those little vesicles or bubbles on the skin. The virus itself is either oval or brick-shaped. It looks like a brick 
or it looks like oval or it looks like an oval brick. So that is how the virus looks like. Virus is enveloped. This is really, really important. It is an enveloped virus. So that is very similar. Envelope to SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 is enveloped virus as well. And now uh, for the enveloped viruses, please keep in mind that the envelope on them that they are ha they, that they have is actually part of our cell membrane and I'll uh, not cell membrane cell uh, cell vesicles part and I'll explain what it is meaning it is ours so it is a brick shaped enveloped virus there is another problem if if it is enveloped and we ingest it with food in theory the stomach acids will burst the envelope causing destruction of the virus. But SARS-CoV-2 is not destroyed that way because SARS-CoV-2, for example, has the spikes on it that protect them. Similarly, this virus can escape the stomach acids as well. Oh, and, and Skyfrog is here. Yay, Skyfrog, I left you a message on uh, Discord. So here, enveloped virus. Inside the virus, of course, there are certain enzymes which will say non-structural proteins. These enzymes are necessary for this virus to function or this virus to replicate in our cells. So that is its machinery to make more viruses. Or the machinery to make more machinery to make more viruses. So that is non-structural proteins. Then it has a long linear, if I can make it like this, it has a long linear double-stranded DNA segment. That is its genome. So this is a DNA virus, not an RNA virus, as we saw with the SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 was a positive sense RNA virus. This one is a single-stranded, sorry, double-stranded DNA, but a single long strand. Why do I keep saying single long strand? In many viruses, the DNA may be in a circular structure. It may be double-stranded, but circular. Here it is one long segment. That is a genome. This is the virus. Now this virus, when it arrives near our cells, what it does is, and can you imagine, we actually do not know exactly how it enters our cells. But what we suspect, and I hope my uh, audio is working, um, this camera scares me every single day. So you may have seen that the lens is now actually a little better. So my picture profile, this is still the same camera, Sony A7C with the so, uh, Sony's Grandmaster lens, but I changed the picture profile. So tell me how does this look now? Okay, so back here, um, you can hear me, right? Okay, excellent. DDS says we can hear you. So on the surface of our cells, there are glycosaminoglycans or something that we say GAG, glycosaminoglycans. These are carbohydrates which are connected to a little bit of a protein. Imagine if my hand, my finger is a protein, tiny protein. And if I bind a long thread with it and that thread is made up of candies, then that is glycans. So little bit of protein, tiny bit of a root of a protein with which a lot of amino acid, long chain of amino acids, oh, I'm saying amino acids, uh, glucoses are attached or glycans. This is a long carbohydrate change and, and the cells have many of these like hair on them. This actually gives them the ability to become slippery and slip past each other. And there are many functions of these. It is thought that the monkeypox virus connects or binds with these glycosaminoglycans, GAGs, and then it enters the cell. Now, cell entry is also not very clear. So it is thought that what happens is the virus uncoats so uncoating all enveloped viruses will have to uncoat, meaning their envelope has to be broken down 
and their genome and the enzymes that are inside the virus, they have to come out in our cell. They have to be liberated from this little pocket. So what happens is the virus uncoats, they say it uncoats in two stages. First, it binds with the glycans. Then it kind of comes near the cell membrane and then it fuses the virus's coat or the envelope, fuses with our cell membrane and then as it fuses and opens up in two stages, this would be called uncoating. Once it is uncoated, the genome of the virus, that DNA, will enter our cytoplasm, our cell's cytoplasm. Plus those little non-structural proteins or those tiny builders that it has brought with it. They all, the whole crew <laughs> with their brain, the genome, has entered our cell. Good so far? Now, generally, double-stranded DNA viruses replicate their genome, that means their DNA, inside a nucleus. Why? Because a nucleus, if I make another cell over here, this is our cell. This is the nucleus. Now I made it a little bigger. This is the nucleus. Within the nucleus of our cell, we have our DNA, correct? I'm just going to make a tiny bit of DNA just to give an example. This is our DNA. And now in the nucleus, we have our own builders. These are called DNA-dependent RNA polymerases. DNA-dependent RNA, RNA polymerases. What does that mean? Polymerases are the enzymes that can create polymers. So here we are talking about DNA. So these enzymes can make DNA polymers. They can make DNA. That's one. Second, they are DNA dependent RNA. That means that they need a DNA structure to copy into an RNA. So in case of SARS-CoV-2, for example, we said RNA dependent RNA polymerase. That polymerase, that builder, makes RNA by looking at an example RNA. So imagine if you are going to cook something and we give you a book and you look at the recipe there and looking at that recipe, you cook something. Now, if that recipe, recipe book or that sample to make is a DNA and then you look at that and make an RNA, then it would be called DNA-dependent RNA polymerase looks at a DNA, makes an RNA. If it is an RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, looks at an RNA, makes an RNA. So normally these enzymes are present inside the nucleus. However, this smarty pants virus brings in its own DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, its own DNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Why? because it does not want to go in our nucleus at all. It wants to do everything in our cytoplasm. So imagine if this is a nucleus, all the nucleus is not normally eccentric. <laughs> Can you imagine this, that people are, this guy Sultanji is sending, uh, what is that, spam here? Man, what is wrong with you? So I'm going to block him. Hold on. Okay, blocked. I can't imagine people do this. Okay, so here is a nucleus. This virus and its crew do not want to go in a nucleus and use our enzyme. Instead, they bring in their own enzyme, stay inside our cell's cytoplasm, use their DNA to make RNA from it. So their own builders make RNA. This RNA template is then used by our uh, ribosomes. Ribosomes. Remember, this is the same thing like SARS-CoV-2. Our ribosomes then engage with this RNA and then they start making more builders, proteins of this virus. These newly formed builder proteins 
would then help make more non-structural proteins plus they would help make copies of this genome so now we'll have the virus genome more brains and the viral structural proteins and non-structural proteins formed then what happens then i want to go here and make one more cell so let's say this is our cell this is our nucleus around our nucleus i just made the nucleus smaller around our nucleus we have things called ribosomes uh, endoplasmic reticulum sorry i'm calling them ribosomes endoplasmic reticulums which are small chambers in which various things happen on these endoplasmic reticulums some of them have ribosome attached with them these ribosomes are these parts that are using rna to make more genome or make virus proteins so these rnas uh, sorry um, Poly, uh, what is that? Ribosomes are here. They attach with the RNA of the virus. They make our viral structures that go inside. Let me change the color. They go inside the endoplasmic reticulum or ER. Now, here is the interesting part. We actually do not know. So many things we don't know about this virus. We actually do not know how this virus now assembles. But it assembles an on the assembly, the membrane, remember, it doesn't have a membrane yet. The original parent virus's membrane got fused with our membrane. These little child viruses, the virions that are being formed, they don't have a membrane yet. So what they do is they steal the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum while they bud out of it. I used to, in the beginning of SARS-CoV-2, I used to keep a little shawl here and I used to put that shawl on my head, if some of you remember, and I used to say that as the virus comes out of it, it would pinch out that part of the shawl with it. So that's the same thing as the virus buds out of the endoplasmic reticulum, it would then, then steal a part of the membrane of that vesicle. Now, then the other structural, non-structural proteins, those things become part of it. How do they all assemble in the form of this little new virus? We don't know exactly. But eventually, there are these brick-shaped new viruses with their own DNA and their own new builders. They are all formed. When they are formed, here is where it becomes bad. This virus, when it comes out of the cell, it kills the cell on its way. This is different from other enveloped viruses. Many enveloped viruses do not kill the cell when they are exiting. They simply just bubble out of the cell. But this one on the way out kills the cell. That is why the destruction and that is why the skin damage. There is another part of that skin damage. I'll explain that in a second. That is a cytotoxic immune system response which also causes plays a part in the damage. But this is how this virus now works. Virus attaches to the glycans, ends up with the genome and the non-structural proteins in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, it comes in with its own DNA-dependent RNA poly polymerases that start making the RNAs or the genome. That RNA attaches with the ribosome and makes more RNAs and DNA. Pieces would start becoming assembled afterwards. Then non-structural proteins, structural proteins, and the genome, they all are collected together. Then they, they steal an envelope from the endoplasmic reticulum and that is a virus, then these little virions get out of the cell, killing the cell on the way out. Now, how about immune system's response? Immune system's response is cytotoxic. This is why patients of HIV have more severe case of this virus because HIV patients cytotoxic lymphocytes are impacted. So here is what happens. So let's say there is this cell with the virus in it and there are viruses coming out and there are virus proteins being presented. We know all of this. So when this happens, we also know that the naive T cell will appear and connect here, naive T cell. And then this naive T cell will predominantly move towards T helper 1 pathway. And that would then cause 
cytotoxic T lymphocyte to be activated. These cytotoxic T lymphocytes in turn would start killing the cells. So when the skin cells are killed, that is when those pox-like elevations would start forming because now there is dead tissue and debris and the fluids and the pus forming. And then as the more and more skin tissue is killed, more and more cells are dying and the more and more skin would raise and it would become thin layered because cells are being removed and killed and destroyed. Eventually that pox will break and then there will be a crust that would appear and then ideally a healing, but a scar can be formed forever. And I had this discussion in the past, then when smallpox was more common in the societies, then milkmaids used to be uh, appreciated or loved because milkmaids used to get cowpox, which will give them immunity from the smallpox. And cow cowpox did not create those lesions with such scarring. So milkmaids used to have very clean, neat skin, while a lot of society members used to have smallpox skin. And because of that, they used to like milkmaids' skins. So here is the mechanism how the skin lesion is produced. Number one, because of the skin cell dying, and number two, because of the cytotoxic attack on the skin cells, which in turn cause intensity. So this is the mechanism. So let me just now very quickly, mechanism is done. Um, so here, this is monkeypox. You can read all about it here. Um, and then this is the pox viridii in general. So this is a, a family of viruses, not just a small pox. So if you see here, there are orthopox viruses, parapox viruses, yatapox viruses, and so on, small pox. Then you see cowpox will be here, monkeypox will be here. And then there are structures for how does it replicate. And if you see most of the replication stages are actually then uh, tagged as, hey, citation needed, more information needed. So anyways, that is what happens with this virus. Now, and this is the glycosaminoglycan, which are really just these uh, disaccharides or two glucose, two candies uh, connected in two candy series. And now then going to the final part of the WHO, and then we are done for the today's discussion. This is the multi-country mon monkeypox outbreak in non-endemic countries update. And this is 29th May. I thought for the first time from WHO, I saw some decent out, uh, update. So here, since 13 May 2022, has been reported in 23 member states have presented through primary care or sexual health services. So it is occurring in people who are either coming to the normal clinics or sexual health clinics. One case of monkeypox in a non-endemic country is considered an outbreak. So if a country is non-endemic for monkeypox, so let's say US is not endemic, even one case will mean there is an outbreak in this country. The sudden appearance of monkeypox simultaneously in several non-endemic countries suggest that there may have been undetected transmission of some time as well as recent amplifying event. And we have one more. I am celebrating the members by myself. Adi Bean is a member as well. Thank you very much. So continuing, description of the outbreak. 26 May, cumulative 257 lab confirmed cases, 122. 220 suspected, fortunately no deaths. And this is how various countries, so this is world level. So I was selfish and I looked at US confirmed cases 10, although you just saw the US data and that is 21 now. So they're a little behind there. And same is for Europe. These are the endemic countries. So check this out, the difference between them. So this is confirmed suspected here Endemic countries have deaths as well. So, for example, Cameroon, 15 December 2021 to May 2022, cumulated, cumulative cases 25, 9 deaths. Central African Republic, 4 March to 17 May 2022, 8 cases, 2 deaths. 
So uh, Doug had corrected me on Dr. Heather's show, 1% fatality rate or 10% fatality rate, two uh, variants. I was saying 10 to 30. Democratic Republic of the Congo, 1st January to 8 May 2022, 1,284 cases, 58 deaths. Nigeria, 1 1st January 2, 30 April, 46 cases, no death. Republic of Congo, two cases, no deaths. Then it is a zoonotic virus. That means it is present in the, in the animals, then jumps on us. Fine, we know that. The name monkeypox originated from the initial discovery of the virus in monkeys in Staten's Serum Institute, Copenhagen, Denmark in 1958. The first human case was identified in Democratic Republic of the Congo in a young child in 1970. It's transmitted from one person to another by close contact with lesions, body fluids, respiratory droplets, contaminated materials such as bedding. It has to be fluids in which the infection is present. This is why it is not easy to have it in semen because semen is not a fluid that is produced in an easily infectable area. So it is being produced in the prostate and the ejaculatory ducts and pro prostate and the testis. And so ducts are really more ductal system. And so they are less easy to infect with monkeypox. But who knows, as this is happening, maybe that is the next step. The incubation period is 6 to 13 days, but can range from 5 to 21 days. Monkeypox is usually self-limiting, but is there likely to be a little immunity to monkeypox? So there is no immunity in us, so understood. Um, the, the two clades, the Congo Basin clade, the 1% and 10% fatality clades, the Congo Basin clade and the West African clade. The Congo Basin clade appears to cause severe disease more frequently with case fatality ratio previously reported up to 10%. Currently, the Democratic Republic of the Congo is reporting a CFR among suspected cases of around 3%. And we have Alexander, who is a member as well. Yay, one more member. Thank you. Alicia says there's a long incubation time. Yes. Correct. So Doug is seminal vesicles producer logist. Correct. So Doug here is helping us with that part as well. <laughs> Doug says I caught up. Thank you very much for being here. And I saw you there as well. Okay, so back here. Since 2017, so the West African clade has in the past been associated with an overall lower CFR of around 1% in generally younger population in South Africa. Since 2017, a few deaths of persons with monkeypox in West Africa have been associated with young age or untreated HIV. So there is a vaccine, a smallpox vaccine helps with this as well in the US. Uh, we talked about it September 2019. We approved a couple of vaccines or one more vaccine, although the supply is limited. Then the risk assessment, <laughs> so WHO's risk ass assessment, I do not know how much we can now bank on that considering the SARS-CoV-2, but anyways, currently the overall public health risk at global level is assessed as moderate considering this is the first time that monkeypox cases and clusters are reported concurrently in widely disparate WHO geographical areas and without known epidemiological links to endemic countries in West Africa. So they're saying it is moderate, it is kind of a little concerning because why did this just happen? The relatively mild symptoms in many cases with localized rash and lymphadenopathy such that may person that many persons may not present to healthcare services. So lymphadenopathies, lack of so why does it keep uh, increasing or spreading? There is the potential for greater health impact with wider spread to vulnerable population groups as deaths among cases in previous outbreaks have been reported to occur more often among children, immunocompromised individuals, including persons with poorly controlled HIV infection who may be especially at risk of the severe disease. And the reason is because the cytotoxic T cell and the helper cells are not as many and as aggressive.
So I believe this is the discussion. They continue and it's a nice, uh, decent, the treatment. Clinical case of patients with monkeypox is supportive. So really no treatment, but supportive. All symptoms should be attended to, including fever, painful sores on skin, lesions, discomfort related to swollen lymph nodes, or any other concerns. Patients should have plenty of rest and fluids as systemic symptoms, for example, fever may lead to dehydration and localized symptoms, like sores in mouth or swollen lymph nodes may result in difficulty eating or drinking enough liquids. Care should be taken to avoid touching mucous membranes, such as the eyes and secondary infections of lesions must be prevented or treated according to local medical protocols. The patient can actually become blind if the pox virus starts infecting conjunctiva and the eye structures. Proper eye and skin care will help to reduce complications and sequelae such as scarring. Patients should also be monitored to ensure that swelling of lymph nodes or abscesses in the mouth or throat do not compromise the ability to breathe, leading to respiratory obstruction. So that is the discussion for today. Uh, I wanted to I wanted to make sure that we can look at this virus a little more in depth, in depth, not depth, in little more in depth. So uh, with this, how about this? If I now hang up, John653 says, we need a tutorial to how to become a member. Let me show it to you right now. So if you go to, let me first bring up my channel. OK, so here is the tutorial. So Gazer Gazer says, open sores are not good these days as more pathogens seem to be around. In yes, I think that one important thing that we have been in, in the lockdowns for two years, our immune system and the, the pathogen structures seem to be totally not in sync anymore. OK, so uh, Paul, I hope you can see that I have started sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Granny says, till death as part, yes. Barbara says, where can we find your interview with doc Dr. Heather today? I have to actually ask him where is the link for that. He said it will be on YouTube and Rumble. I don't know if I said things that may have rubbed negatively for YouTube and if it is only on Rumble. I have to ask him for the, uh, for the link. Uh, but I saw Doug was there, uh, Jody. Denise, TG, um, I saw more people there, more cool beans there. Luffy was being mentioned too. So there, there was a good representation of cool beans there. So uh, if you go here to drbean.com, oh, sorry, <laughs> on the on YouTube, Dr. Bean, here there is this join button. This is a new thing. So if you click on the join button, there are three possibilities. You can become Luffy enters the first uh, level or Luffy has catnip, that is the second level. And then Luffy zooms, that is the third level. Every second level contains, every advanced level contains the level below, the features from there. So for example, Luffy enters, has when you join that it is two ninety nine per month, and there are these little um, what are these badges and emoticons that you can use. I don't know why they are not yet prevalent, or maybe they are. If you then become, let's say, Luffy has catnip, then you get the level one plus this level's um, benefits, and this level has early access to new videos. So this this is for those videos that I would record and put them up. You can actually watch them first and then they would be open to public. Then there can be photos and statuses that are only for these members. Then if you are Zoom member, then it is $24.99. So it has level one or two included in it, plus a Zoom call, I believe, every month with you. So that is the this is how then you click join and you join. So hopefully that helps. And I just saw Alicia becoming a member. Thank you very much. <laughs> so 
uh, Alexander says, cool, angry, shocked, awesome. So I think these are all the badges. I cannot see those here in this chat, but hopefully in the live chat, these can be seen. <laughs> so uh, Texas, I see that you're here. I hope you're doing well. I hope Sky Frog is doing well. I hope Lisu and her family are doing well. And um, so what was I going to say? What I was going to say was, um, how about if we, so tomorrow I have a 10 o'clock with Dr. Mark Levitt on this channel. So how about if we skip the chit chat today as well? So I would hang up this call and wait for your comments. If you say it's okay, then we'll continue tomorrow. Now, please also remember tomorrow evening this time, we will have, we'll have Dr. Denise Hertz. She is a doctor who was also participant in NIH study, and she wants to also uh, present her situation. So with this, please like, subscribe, and share if you like it. it. I think these are good, interesting talks. If you like them, like, subscribe, and share, and become member. And in the, in the description, there is a link to drbean.com where there are a thousand lectures which are awesome lectures that is premium content and the price for all of them access to all of them and new lectures that keep coming in is less than 100 dollars. so click that you'll enjoy it and then there are links in the description to uh, if you wanted to uh, buy me a coffee or use paypal or become a patron or uh, start a Substack. all of them are great thank you very much and i would wait for your comments and if okay we'll meet tomorrow otherwise we'll do chit chat now that is basically up to you thank you bye bye